So the very last part of this chapter, and hopefully making sense of everything we've done so far, is returning to this concept of line spectra and using the electron configuration information that we have learned now to explain line spectra. That's kind of the whole purpose of the discussion over the last several videos. And to explain line spectra, we first have to talk about excited states and excited state electron configurations. So first off, let's define what's the lowest energy state of an atom. And that is where all of the electrons are in their lowest possible energy levels. That is known as the ground state. And that's the normal electron configuration that we write. We fill all the electrons up, starting from the lowest uh, orbital, lowest energy orbitals up to until we run out of electrons. That we refer to as the ground state. So hydrogen, its ground state is just 1s1. Neon, its ground state is just 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. An excited state, and, and here we can show this just in the uh, ground state diagram, orbital diagram as well. An excited state, however, is a case where an electron sits in a higher energy orbital than it does in the ground state. So in this case, we take and is always or almost always an electron from one of the highest energy orbitals we have in the ground state gets promoted up into a higher energy orbital. So for hydrogen, for example, if we took that electron in the 1s orbital and we bumped it up into a higher energy orbital, then we could write its electron configuration something like this. 1s0 now, there's no electrons there. 2s1, if we had moved the electron up into the 2s orbital. It's also possible for any orbitals that have no electrons in them. It is also acceptable to simply leave off the empty orbitals. So you could write this as simply being 2s1 for the excited state uh, electron configuration. Now, if we look at neon, we can draw something very similar. So the ground state has the electrons in the 1s, the 2s, and the 2p orbitals, and they're all paired. But if we somehow promote an electron to an excited state, we take one of the highest energy electrons, so one that's in the p orbital, and bump it up into a higher energy orbital, say the 3s orbital, we can now get an excited state, which we would write its configuration as 1s2, 2s2, 2p5, 3s1. Now, why am I saying all of this? Well, if we revisit the line spectra, so remember that line spectra, that line spectra results from electrons that got promoted into an excited state. So as in this case here, that electron in a 3s orbital, these lines result from when those electrons jump back to lower energy orbitals. So in this case, back to the ground state from the 3s, down to the 2p, when that, when that electron jumps back, it emits its extra energy as a photon of light. And so that photon corresponds to a certain energy, the energy gap between those two orbitals, and that corresponds to a specific wavelength of light, and that is thus the line that we see. Now there's many possible excited states. We didn't need to promote this electron to the 3s orbital. We could have promoted it all the way up to the 4p orbitals or even higher. And when it comes down, it doesn't necessarily have to come straight down to the, uh, the place where it came from. It could then jump sequentially down from the 4p down to the 3d and then down to the 4s and then down to the 3p and then down to the 3s and then finally down to the 2p again. And each jump corresponds to a certain energy difference. It gives off the energy difference of, those, of, the, of the two orbitals as a photon of light, which corresponds to a specific wavelength of light, and thus a line in our line spectra. And, the, and this is how we see or and explain the line spectra for neon or for any atom. We look at the electron configurations, and we can calculate, if we know the energies of the different orbitals, 
we can make calculations for, based on the energy differences for where those lines should appear and can match that well with experimental data. Now, the last question you may have is, how do we go from a ground state to an excited state? It makes sense that we get the line spectra if the atom starts in the excited state and then those electrons jump back down to lower energy down to the ground state. But how does it get into the excited state to begin with? It takes energy, remember, to go from lower energy orbital to a higher energy orbital. And there's really three ways we can input that energy. The first is we can do absorption of light. So if you shine light of the right wavelength, you can promote an electron to a higher energy orbital. Additionally, you can use heat. And this explains all the way back to that one anomaly, the black body radiation, where hot objects glow. This is why hot objects glow, because we input that energy in the form of heat that promotes electrons to an excited state. And when they relax back down to the ground state, they emit that energy in the form of light. So we finally have an explanation for that phenomenon. The last one is electricity. And this is how most light bulbs, so fluorescent light bulbs in the ceiling, neon signs, in those cases, we're simply using electricity to excite the electrons to a higher energy orbital. And then when they relax back down, they produce the light that we then use to light our homes or state that the store is open or closed, etc. So I hope that this summarizes this chapter, but also helps to explain the phenomena that we observe now from an atomic perspective.